I had a really cool dream about a week and a half ago, middle of December, that I want to share with you. I believe it to be a prophetic dream, and it's going to encourage you in how and why and what you hear God's voice better. Who, what, when, where, why, how. Some of those. This is the dream that took place. I'm in this classroom setting type of environment, and there's a very well-known YouTube prophet who's in the stream. He gets questioned, can you talk about hearing God's voice versus discerning God's voice? He begins to talk, but then he looks at me and says, you should answer this instead. What's so cool about this dream is in my own personal walk, I've been going through this lesson of late, how God is ironing out the difference between hearing God's voice and discerning God's voice. And many times Christian prophets on YouTube or anywhere else, people will say, I hear the Lord saying this to me. And a lot of times that is a rhema audible word, but sometimes it's also just them discerning God's voice throughout their life. And that's another form of hearing God's voice. So in the stream, he turns to me and he goes, how about you share this with everyone? And so I go, okay. And this is basically the lesson that I want to unpack that God was teaching me and that he confirmed in the stream and that I want to release here on this YouTube channel. There are times when God will speak. It's a rhema word. It's the audible voice of God. I'm not talking about the Bible. Everything should always line up with the Bible. But remember, the New Testament church didn't have a New Testament Bible. And the Bible that we use today was compiled around 300 to 350 years after the life of Christ. And people added books to it and removed it. It got refined. And we need to pray and hope that they heard God's voice in the construction of what we call the Holy Bible. That being said, God is not limited to his text. If God wanted to be limited, he would stay in the Ark of the Covenant, but he didn't want that. He wanted us to have a personal, intimate relationship with him. And he says that my sheep know my voice. He says, I no longer am your master, but I'm your friend. He wants that relationship with you and he wants you to know, hear, and discern his voice in your life. Just to be clear here, this is not an anti-Bible message. Rather, this is a pro-Bible and pro-deepening your personal walk with God message. So quick story time. I'm going to get back to the dream in just a second. But in my own personal walk with Christ, when I first became a Christian in college, I had to take a ton of naps to just survive. I was working out a lot, not getting a lot of sleep. So I became like a nap enthusiast. But I was also living a consecrated life and I was hungering and thirsting for Christ. What I noticed is that I would often get these little screenplays when I'm either falling asleep to take a nap or when I'm waking up. And even when I take a nap, I would sometimes get these short little movie reels, or sometimes I'd wake up and I'd have like a Bible verse that popped into my mind. It took me a couple of years to realize that this is actually the Spirit's involvement in my own life, dropping me little breadcrumbs, giving me, um, uh, you know, just giving me insights to my own personal walk with Christ. Now, it took me some time to develop the recognition that this is how the Lord speaks to me personally sometimes. Why it felt weird for so long is that, well, the world tells us, often tells us, number one, hey, your dreams don't matter. Oh, that was just a dream. Oh, you woke up, something was on your mind. Don't worry about it. It's just a dream. When actually the scripture tells us that all throughout the Old Testament and New Testament, dreams and speaking to us in the night is one of the most common ways that God communicates We just came out of the Christmas holidays and we all heard the nativity story of Jesus, you know, going through this troublesome birth here. How many times were people warned and spoken to in the dreams? Like dozens. It's absurd. When you look at the Old Testament, we love the story of Solomon asking God for wisdom. Well, he didn't really ask for wisdom. He was the high Supreme Court over the land. And so he said, who can judge these people effectively? So he asked for a discerning heart. But he asked for that in a dream. All throughout the Bible, dreams are one of the most common ways in which God speaks to people. And I believe that so many more people dream than they actually think they do. The problem is that a lot of times when you wake up, in order to recall the dream, it does often require not checking your phone, staying in bed a little extra longer, basking in God's presence and asking him to bring to your mind what you were just experiencing before you woke up. A lot of times people wake up and they go from zero to 100, when sometimes the best way to do it is to wake up and then just stay in that restful place for a moment or two. And there's been countless times where I've had incredible dreams that I couldn't remember, but by simply just basking in God's presence, it was like he then held out an envelope and opened it up and allowed me to like remember the details of what I was just experiencing in the night when I was asleep. Now, as we go deeper into the topic of hearing God's voice versus discerning God's voice in your life, which we're going to get to the discerning in a moment, it's really important that I say this. Not every experience you have is always going to be from God. You need to always bring things back to the Bible. A lot of times, if you're not living a consecrated life, 
I mean, you can open up the spiritual doors to be attacked. You can have demonic attacks. You can be deceived. These things can happen. Like, they can happen. But this is all the more reason why it's important to always bring things back to the Bible. And so, thankfully, we have the Bible. We have something, a blueprint that we can go back to and say, does this line up with God's character? Did what I hear or received throughout the night, did it line up with the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control? Does it have the attributes that we see here in his written word. Now, real quick time out. Hollywood likes to teach us that the word of God is this loud, audacious, thunderous, theatrical thing. When God speaks, the whole heavens shake and the earth shakes. And a lot of times that's not actually the case. A lot of times it's a small, still voice, just like the prophet was it Elisha had. God's voice was not in the whirlwind. It was not in the thunder. It was not in the fire. It was not in the rainstorm. It was in a small, still voice. So sometimes when I hear from the Lord, whether it's in the morning hours when I'm just barely awake, or if it's throughout my day and I'm daydreaming and all of a sudden I just hear a rhema word pop in, it's like this invisible voice. It's almost like these bubble letter characters. It's like a small, still, silent, but audible voice that I hear inside my mind that I know is from God and he's telling me something. Now that's the rhema awesome word of God, but it was not always like that for me. Actually, the first few years that I became a Christian, I noticed that I was hearing God's voice in a different way. And this is what I want to share with you right now. A lot of people, God is speaking to you, but rather than like hearing it in the ways that I just described, you're actually learning to discern his voice in your life. You're learning to discern the spirits leading. And what does that look like? There was this time when I first became a Christian that I was in the Bible every day. Like, I mean, not just like I currently am. I mean, from morning till sunset, I would go to school I'd come back from, you know, in between college classes and I would just read the Bible. And what I found so amazing is I would read the Bible, I'd take notes, I'd highlight everything, and I would go to church. And sure enough, the pastor who was deep in the word of God that week, he would always be preaching like the exact same things that I was reading in my Bible that week. So many times that this happened that I realized, hey, this is not a coincidence. This is actually what it's like when you're hanging out with God, when you're in the throne room, you actually can pick up on some of the things that are going on in heaven. In the same way that we have on social media topics that trend, you know, things get trending and eventually you catch wind of it. There's things like that that are going out from the throne room. And when you're hanging out with Yahweh, when you're drawn near to Jesus, when you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And in that place, you'll actually start to find yourself picking up on what's trending in the throne room. A couple of days ago, um, I was in a hot tub and I had the hot tub to myself and I just had this heartache. I was like, oh, I don't want to pray. Like, I don't want to reach out to Jesus right now. I don't want to reach out to the Holy Spirit. I actually want to reach out to the Father, like Abba Father. It was like these blinders were lifted from me. And I was just like, the Father, he's such an integral part of this Christian walk. I was like, I don't know why, but I just feel this, this deep calling, this love, this groaning to know the Father better for God, the Father, for he loved us so much that he gave us his son. You know, so much of this story, Jesus only said what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw the Father do. There's so much of the Father that's encapsulated in Christ. Like, he, Christ was the perfect display of the Father's heart and character. Growing up, I thought that the Father was a big, mean, angry God out in the distance. But no, his, his wrath, any of that justified wrath, was, was satisfied in Christ's life. And Christ displayed the Father's heart by healing the sick, raising the dead, you know, Christ was rejected by all the religious people. It's always funny when people that are not Christians say, oh, I don't like religion. I'm like, then you should love Jesus because he was crucified by the religious people. Yeah, there's definitely some religious people in church nowadays and, you know, especially in the South, no offense, but basically the father, I had this, this heart groaning in love for the father. And I just noticed this, I wrote it down or made a mental note of it. I was like, I just really felt loved by the father. And I felt this invitation to love the father. Maybe a day or two later, a prophet on YouTube was speaking. He said something along the lines of this. It's like, if your heart is not crying out, Abba, Father, right now, like, you know, <laughs> I forget what he said after that, but he's like, basically right now, there's this thing going on where like your heart should be calling out to the Father in the season. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is a direct confirmation of exactly what I experienced and went through. Now, that's just one example of many of what it's like to discern God's voice in your life. Now, let's toss out the confirmations that come from other people, whether it's a pastor preaching from the pulpit or a prophet online. Here's another way in which you can learn to discern God's voice and his leading in your life. What I'll notice is that there's times when I'll just be jumping around scriptures, trying to find a good passage to get into, and I'll find something that just grabs my attention and it just feeds me. It just feeds the need that I have in life or whatever I went through, whatever I'm dealing with. And I'll meditate on it. I'll chew it. I'll let it digest. 
the next thing that happens, I'll be going about my day and something will come up that acts as a confirmation for what I had read in the Bible. Something fluke, something out of the ordinary, uh, something that just is unexpected. And that's also learning to discern God's voice in your life. This is God saying something to you, maybe not audibly with his words, but he's teaching you, he's showing you, he's communicating to you something. Another example of this could be, um, there's times in the morning when I've had with cryptocurrency, just a hunch. I didn't hear anything from God. I didn't get a vision or a word, but I've, I've had a hunch about some kind of a crypto. And next thing you know, I'm not even looking for it. I get into the, my car, I'm driving down the highway or something, and I'll just have like three cars pass me all at once. that have like the exact same three letters in their license plate, which is a direct confirmation of like the crypto that I had felt like I'd heard God tell me in the morning. And stuff like that serves as confirmations. Um, these these confirmations that you learn to discern in your life as you're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, as you're trying to live a life for Christ, as you're trying to pursue him, um, to please him. I mean, we don't please him through our acts, but you know, we have his desires on our heart because we love him. As you're walking in life through that, you'll notice these things trend. They're like, huh, that's interesting. That's a confirmation. But I want to caution you with one other thing. I've found myself in my own personal life wanting to get confirmations from God so bad, wanting to hear his voice so much, wanting to get a word so much that I actually lose the point entirely, that it's not so much about the companionship with Christ as much as it is just trying to get, get, get. God wants us to abide. He wants us to chill. He wants us to relax in the back of the boat. What does that mean? Well, when everyone else is freaking out in the middle of a storm, Jesus was just taking a nap. And as Bill Johnson says it, the storm that you can sleep through is the storm that you can speak to. So they woke him up. He's like, hey, don't you see that there's this massive storm going on? He's like, guys, relax. And he calms the storm right there. And everyone's like, who on earth is this guy that the heavens and the earth obey him? God wants us to have this more relaxed, chill type of vibe when we hang out with him. We don't want to be living to get, get, get. We've already received everything in Christ. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That word want actually translates to I shall not lack any good thing. I want to say all that to say, though is sometimes if you're approaching hearing God's voice and looking for confirmations actively, you'll actually find this thing called apophenia kick in. And apophenia is trying to find connections in places that don't actually exist. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to do this. You don't have to be a non-Christian. This is something that everyone has experienced. You want to hear something so bad or you want something to be the case so bad. You're trying desperately, so desperately to like find connections actively that you're making up connections in your mind. You're like making up your own confirmations. And that's what apophenia is. It's trying to find connections in things that don't actually really exist or take place. So in this dream, basically, back to the very beginning here, I was just given this opportunity to speak to people, and I woke up with this essence of saying, hey, I need to make a video to share that there's multiple ways of hearing God's voice. Number one, we have the Bible. You know, thank God for the the forefathers in the faith, the pioneers, um, you know, people like Paul who were literally almost stoned to death many times, all of the early disciples, the early church, the book of Acts, we have such concrete examples. That is like the blueprint that everything needs to line up with and confirm with. As well, there's times that when you spend time in the word and you're actually hungering for it, you're eating it, you will find that the words actually jump off the page into your eyeballs. It doesn't happen that often, but when you're really hungering for the Bible and you're reading it, it's no longer just text. This stuff is actually living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword piercing through the divisions of bone and marrow. It actually can jump off the pages to you. And that's another time in which I've heard God actually speak to me. Like it was him talking. It was no longer me reading the text. It was like the text jumping off and Jesus speaking to me through the written word of God. So we have that. We have this, um, you know, the rhema, learning Holy Spirit, learning your personal walk with Christ. And that if you couldn't read, if you were blind, if you had never had a Bible before, still learning how to hear the shepherd's voice in your life and discerning what it's like for you. It might be slightly different for all of us. The way in which he speaks to me might be tailored to me. There might be this time in the morning where like my brain is fully turned off that he can actually deliver a message to me. For other people, they might not have a crazy analytical brain that I do. They might be very more artistic and you know, for whatever reason, the windows are just open that God can like speak to them in that situation. Now, God can speak to anybody, whoever, wherever, whenever, of course, but cultivating that personal intimacy with Christ to know his voice for yourself. My sheep know my voice, and that's on you to learn his voice in your life. We've got the Bible, we've got the rhema, and we've also got learning to discern God's voice personally for you what it's like to be going throughout your day, hearing God um, lead you and guide you with 
coincidences. Now, the word coincidence isn't even found in the Bible. But basically, learning these patterns of recognition of like, wow, this is another way in which God leads me and speaks to me. It's discerning his voice through the things that happen while I'm living my life seeking the Lord. I hope that this somehow benefited you. If it did, give it a like, drop a comment, share some of your thoughts as well in the description below. I know that there's plenty of theologians, there's pastors, there's preachers, there's teachers who could do a much better expose on all the different words in the Bible that have to do with hearing, you know, hearing God's voice. And there's many other people that can share their testimonies of the ways in which God speaks to them. For some people, it might be in nature. For some people, it might be painting. For some people, it might be sleeping like me. There's tons of different ways in which God speaks to people, but I would just encourage you to live a self-aware life, live a son-aware life, aware of Jesus Christ, but be mindful of the ways in which he might be trying to talk to you and speak to you. I really hope that this benefited you. Like it, subscribe, share it, all that wonderful stuff, and until next time.